Before update 7.3.5, heavy grenade launchers were a bit of a specialist pick to run in PvE since the low reserves meant they were only useful in strictly DPS scenarios. And even then, these applications were often limited to smaller fireteam sizes including the likes of dungeons or low man raids. The reason you would never see people running grenade launchers in six man raids is because outside of a few edge cases, rockets were always the better option. Now however, post update 7.3.5, grenade launchers have been shoved right into the spotlight with the massive reserve ammo buffs they received and the the meta has finally been brought back into question. The fact remains though, what is the difference between grenade launchers and rockets now and how does this affect larger team scenarios like six man raids? And if the balance truly has shifted, do you now need to obtain the elusive god roll cataphract or do rockets still retain an iron grip on the meta? In today's video, we're going to explore exactly that, calculating DPS and total damage values for the current most popular rockets and grenade launchers and discussing cases where you would specifically choose one over the other. And believe me, you'll want to know what these are, especially if you're a day one raider. Starting things off, we ought to get some data on the DPS and total damage for the weapons from each subfamily. Before I show the numbers on screen, I'd like to quickly go over my testing methodology. All tests were carried out on the Templar where I was standing in a well of radiance while having optimal weapon conditions, which by that I mean things like proccing bait and switch, having wolfpack rounds applied, having a debuff, and equipping surges. DPS was calculated using the 10 second no teleport window and total damage by emptying the entire reserves. All numerical data was calculated using destiny damage tracker, the health bar pixel counter made by a 2016 Toyota Corolla used to measure the true and most accurate damage dealt to a boss. The weapons and corresponding perk combinations tested can be seen on screen now. I also calculated the DPS and total damage for Galahorn for reasons you'll see shortly. But before we get into that, consider joining our Discord community so we can hit my goal of 2000 members before the final shape, link in the description. So taking a look, we can see that Cantafrac manages to out DPS all three of the other options as well as having the most total damage. Regnan is the worst for total damage but has slightly better DPS than Caraxis, but the main reason I put it up there in the first place is just to show how a regular non-raid, non-trials, non-bait and switch GL manages against the top dogs. And honestly, it's not bad. So what does this mean and where should you be using one over the other? Well, let's start by looking at trio content, things like dungeons, for example. In this content, assuming all three players have the god roll cataphract, your team DPS would be about 550,000 and your team total damage would be around 8.4 million. Comparing this to if you had two legendary rockets and one Galahorn, your team DPS would be lower at about 350,000 and similarly your team total damage would also be lower at around 6.7 million. What this tells us is that in things like dungeons, rockets are out of the question. Okay, so now how about six man raids? If we were to do a similar calculation, we can again see that having six grenade launchers comes out on top, but in reality, while this is still fairly optimal, it isn't quite the best because we haven't factored in damage rotations, which especially with rockets is typically the most common way you'd be using them. Take this rotation here for example. A super optimal strand Izzy rocket rotation deals 3.1 million total damage to Greg in 30 seconds and simply mag dumping cataphract only gets you about 2.2 million as we saw earlier. However, with a scatter signal breach GL rotation, you're now looking at about 2.8 million damage on Greg, which honestly isn't bad at all. What this tells us is that rockets are still the best when it comes to rotation DPS, but cataphract is in fact in a very close second. In general though, for legend raiding, I'm hesitant to recommend cataphract over rockets because outside of a few outliers like Warpriest, Oryx or Rulk, total damage doesn't really matter and I'd much rather have more DPS to be able to kill the boss quicker. That said, you could still use Cataphract with the scatter signal rotation since the difference isn't so drastic. For master raiding however, I would now be tempted to recommend GLs purely because of how inflated the health pools of the bosses become. Really though, the main area where I'm absolutely recommending having a Cataphract and any future bait and switch GL over anything else is going to be day one raid. Now I know this may not apply to all of you, but in day one raids specifically, DPS does not have as much of a bearing as it does in bog standard non-contest raids, unless of course the encounter demands burst DPS, but outside of that, a typical 30 second damage phase in a day one raid scenario demands total damage more than DPS because of how under leveled you are and how many phases a boss encounter will be taking, which is typically three to four on a day one. It's also important to keep in mind that the enemies hit just as hard as master mode, except the difference is you don't have an abundance of champions you can Aeon finish to generate more more ammo. Having the ability to carry more total damage right from the get-go is essential for success in day one raids, and I fully believe teams will be bringing in Cataphract for the final shape day one and beyond, self-included. So, to answer the title of the video, yes, you should try to get yourself a Cataphract since it's the king of trio content and also has the potential to carry in the next day one. Furthermore, come final shape, we could be seeing a damage nerf to either Galahorn or Rockets in general, as Bungie stated in a recent TWAB that, quote, the rocket launcher meta has become more set than we'd like. 
which when assuming that GLs would remain untouched, further raises the power of Cataphract and any future bait and switch heavy GLs. Additionally, the updated changes to spike grenades make it so you don't really have to worry about making sure you get it. But if you'd really like to know more about if you do or don't need spike grenades, I have a whole video on that which you can check out now. Anyways, that's all we've got time for today. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Your support means the world. And if you're really into the content I create, consider becoming a member of the channel, which not only lets you support me in the best way possible, it also nets you a whole host of awesome perks along with it. A massive shout out to these members up on screen and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, dear viewer.